Hi, welcome back. I'm Joseph. Today we're going to go over lesson uh, 6.5 from Hurley's 13th um, edition, Introduction to Logic. So today's indirect truth tables. Um, I'll be going over some homework examples with you, uh, preliminary skills, testing arguments for validity, and testing statements for consistency. Um, but once you come here, whether you're following me in my class using MindTap or you're following using Hurley's book, or if you're just driving in a car listening. Um, <clears throat> I would have already expected you would have done the reading, but if you haven't, um, you'll be missing some details, but you know, there you go. So let's go to our text. And again, this is layers of 6.1 through 6.4 coming at you. Indirect truth tables, think of these like, remember how when we looked at arguments we were testing for validity we would count how many propositions there were like how many different letters that represented the propositions and if we had three letters <clears throat> on let me let me scroll back up here into six point four remember how if we had three propositions it was eight lines on the truth table if we had four propositions it was 16 lines if we had five propositions anybody remember how many lines that was it was I think 32 let's look <clears throat> yeah yeah 32 so imagine having an argument with five different propositions and in order to test the validity using these truth tables you get to create 32 lines which is totally a lot it's a huge amount of work now imagine you have six different propositions 64 lines so the reason we're in 6.5 is really says hey there's a shortcut um, what we do is we assume, well, let me go down to it. So yeah, the purpose of doing um, testing for invalidity is to avoid doing massive amount of truth tables, okay? So <clears throat> what he says, let me go back down. Don't follow the screen with your eyes. A lot going on here until I get there. Okay. <clears throat> so indirect truth tables provide a shorter, Everybody loves shorter, right? Shorter and faster method for testing the validity of arguments than ordinary truth tables. This method is especially applicable to arguments that contain a large number of different simple propositions, and we went over that. So <clears throat> um, we'll get into that, but let's look at the preliminary skills. Um, using indirect truth table requires developing the skill to work backwards from the truth value of the main operator, and that's gonna be the main theme here. Always look for the main operators and the premises and the conclusion. Um, and then work backwards. So suppose example, you're given a conjunctive statement that is true, right? But what are the rules for the conjunctive statement? It means that the A and the B have to be true, right? Both have to be true. We know that just from knowing this is true. So in short, we just know A and B is true. What about, suppose on the other hand, you're given a conditional statement that's false. What's the only way the conditional statement can be false? If A is true and B is false, or the antecedent is true and the consequence false. So in our preliminary, preliminary examples, we'll just, he'll just be giving you a few examples like this. And he says, hey, well, what's A and B or what are the missing ones? And can you know them? So that'll be an easier part. Then um, I'll get to this part. Let me see here. There we go. All right. So he says, well, I'll look at this when we get to... Um, arguments for validity but what he says is hey assume your premises are true your conclusion is false then work backwards and find out without using truth tables let's see if we can prove this if we can we know the whole argument's invalid because that's what we assumed from the beginning but if we find a contradiction something inside a premise or conclusion that's not the case then we know the whole thing's valid it's the opposite so I'll show you examples of this. I won't look at these for review because we'll be doing review problems. But he goes over this meticulously. He says, hey, for example, here's an argument, right? And just like we did in previous chapters, separate these out by lines, right? Put them um, instead of vertically, horizontally. And then he says, look, just assume that the premises are both true, which means you got to find the main operator. So there's the main operator for that one. Main operator for the second premise is the tilde. Main operator for this one, right? Then he says... Try to figure out plugging away, and, and usually you can start from the conclusion, but however, you can start from other um, areas in the argument. For example, 
If we know this is true, what does B have to be? It has to be false because it's a negation. So we got false for B. We can go right over here and plug B into false. And then, um, you know, and we start kind of process of elimination. We start figuring out our A, Bs, and Cs. And then we find out, once we do that, when we look at all this, um, do we find a contradiction? If we don't, the whole thing's invalid. And what that means is the whole thing is what we assumed it to be in the first place. We didn't have to assume it to be this way, but we just did. You could assume it to be valid. Um, but then you might have to do those long truth tables and start plugging away. But if you assume it to be invalid, you can start plugging away and see if you can uh, provide a contradiction. And then if you do, then you know it's not invalid. I know it's a lot, but so it's sort of like you start from the opposite and you try to prove that it's true. And if you prove that it's true, then it's invalid. If you prove that it's false or something contradicts, you know it's the opposite, which means it's valid. And uh, we'll, we'll be doing examples of these. So in short, Hurley gives you a few examples. Um, and you can look at these, but we will go on. Okay. And yeah, these are, these are important. And I'll, like I said, I've already assumed that you've done the reading and this is exactly what I've been saying all along. Contradiction versus no contradiction. If you find a contradiction, it's valid, which is the opposite of what you assumed because you assumed it's invalidity, right? If you don't find a contradiction, then you know, the argument is invalid, which is what you as assumed. So, and then he wants you to test the validity of statements. So there is no argument here, right? So there's just a statement, a statement, a statement, a statement. You assume that they're all true. Then you start plugging away and say, okay, are they? Well, if they are, you know, they're consistent with one another. And if they're not, they're inconsistent. So true, false, true. Yeah. So again, assume all the statements are true. If you want a contradiction, they're inconsistent. If you don't, they're consistent. So those are the three sections of homework, pretty much, that we're going to be going over. And then D. Morgan. Whew. Yeah, D. Morgan's Law. Um, that would have been covered in, I think, 6.3. I think it's in there. 6.2 or 6.3. Oh, no, no, sorry. Chapter 1, I believe, when we looked at conditionals and a few other um, examples of those type of statements. You can see D. Morgan's Law, but uh, we're going to steer away from that. You don't need to know that. All right. So let's go into our possible homeworks. And now we're just going to go straight into your indirect truth tables. Okay. So let's do this. Go to my pen. So these are going to be pretty easy. So these are just the preliminaries. And we have a, what, a disjunction here? Yes. Right. So he's telling us right here, he's saying, look, the disjunction is true. And if it's true, he's telling us that K is false. So what does that mean D has to be if the whole disjunction is true? What does it have to be? It has to be true here, right? Because in order for the whole conjunction or uh, disjunction to be true, at least one side has to be true. So it's just, that's the answer. It's just um, simple as that. That's pretty easy, right? Um, he's giving us a conditional. He's saying the conditional is true. He's saying that the consequent is true. And that means the antecedent has to be what? Yep. Oh, actually. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Give me a second. Work out on myself. So. Proud of those of you that had this. It could be. Um true or false, right? Because if you look back to your rule, you could have that and you could have this. It could be either one. You actually don't know what the antecedent is, so it's unknown. And again, you can go back in um, your section, the previous one, 6.2, 6.3, and you could see the rules for this, for the operators. So it's unknown because it could be two different possibilities. Fine. Seven. We have a disjunction, another one, right? We know the whole thing's true. This side's false. What does C have to be? Has to be true, right? <clears throat> Go up there. Um, because the uh, the rule of the um, this symbol here, the logical operator, 
for the disjunction is if it's true, at least one side has to be true. So you know automatically by default this has to be true because this side's false. Um, 10, another disjunction. So I know the whole, and okay, so this is this is an interesting one. We know the whole thing's true and we have true on this side, but do we know what H is? No, we don't. And for those of you that push pause and try to do these before I gave you the answer, good for you. Because that's how you truly learn, right? Okay, so we know this conditional is false. And what is the only way that the conditionals are false? If you have a true antecedent and a false consequent. So, C is true and P is false. So that's pretty easy. We, he didn't give us a, um, a conjunction, but those are, those are easy. So, you know, he could, he could have gave us a triple bar as, as well as far as these examples, but um, in fact, we'll throw one up there. We'll just, we'll wing it. We'll say A equals D. This is true. This is another example. So if the biconditional is true and we have one side false, what's the other side have to be? All right, they have to match, right? So we know A equals false, has to be. And let me just top it off. Let me do, let me do another example. If we know the conjunction is false and C is true, What's, what's D have to be for the whole conjunction to be false? It has to be false. Why? Because both sides have to be false. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Both sides have to be true for the conjunction to be true. So if, if just one side's false, the whole thing doesn't work. And we know the whole thing doesn't work from the beginning, so we just simply say D equals false. So those are just two examples of different operators, okay? So first section preliminaries are done. You just kind of plug away. And really what he's getting at is, hey, he's saying work, work backwards. I'll give you a couple things. You tell me what the other thing is. And the reason you can do this is you, if you know what the logical operator is, the truth value of it, just by knowing the rules of it, you can figure out what the other propositions are, such as A or D or C or D. Whatever the letter of the proposition is, doesn't matter. So let's go to part two. So this one, um, it's important to know that... And by the way, if you if you followed uh, followed me on MindTap, you would have had four videos that Hurley himself walks you through, like little kind of um, exercises. And he says basically, you got to assume the argument's invalid. This is our shortcut. You assume the whole thing's invalid. So what we do is we take it from the vertical, and what what do we do? We put it. Oh, let me do this. We put it in the horizontal, right? So let's do this. Oh, geez. like that like that <clears throat> and he says what I want you to do he goes find the main operators of each premise and conclusion right and assume right from the get-go that they're the, the premises are true and the main operator the conclusion is false he goes just start there assume it right away what you're doing is you're assuming invalidity right from the get-go then you enter your assumptions into the truth table, like I just did, right? There's one assumption. There's the other assumption. There's the other assumption, right? Then you have to walk, work your way backwards, looking to see if you can break any rules, provide a contradiction. And if you do, then you know that the whole thing is not invalid, which is what you're assuming right here, right? Um, if you do find a contradiction, then, then the whole thing is the exact opposite. It turns out it's valid. So we'll, we'll um, work our way with this one. So let's do this. Um, yes. So we know not C. So you take the opposite. You know C is false, right? So you put a false here. But the th whole thing has to be true. So you can't put true on B, it has to be false because that's the rule for that operator. If it's true and you have the consequent, 
false, the other one has to be false. And then so we just plug away with um, we are we know our B is already false. So we got we got our plugins right. Let's do this. Let's see. Let me see here. Oh, oh. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, quick, quick mistake here. That's right. You could start there, but you could also start here. So, I forgot. Usually, I like to start with a conclusion, so that's all I'll do. I'll get the same answer, but I'll do it differently. So, we know that B is the opposite, right? Um, because we know that we're assuming this tilde is false. So we'll take the opposite and we'll say uh, B is true. If the whole thing is going to be true, then we have to put this. Um, and then what we do is we carry the C over here and we find out there's our contradiction because it's supposed to be not. That tilde is supposed to negate it. There's our contradiction. So if I didn't find it here, I would have found it in another place depending on where I started. So there's a contradiction, which means when you assumed that this whole thing was invalid from the start, it's not. It's valid. Because you have a contradiction. Okay? Usually I start with the um, conclusion and work my way back. But as long as you find a contradiction, it doesn't matter where you find it. You know the whole thing is... Um, valid. But in some cases, you have to continue. You have to, and we'll, we'll see this with my next example, in fact. So four, let me do this and back up. Oh. Okay, so four, you map this up <clears throat> sideways. So let's do this. And there's our conclusion. All right there. Um, <clears throat> so what we do is we start with, oh, oh, that's right. Just to make it good for you viewing, we'll start by saying, hey, that's true. And what's the main operator over here? It's true. We'll say the premise is true. And the, um, the conclusion is false. And then we'll try to work our way backwards. So um, there's two ways that this triple bar, or sorry, sorry. It's false. Let me see here. Give me one second. Okay. So I will do this. I'm going to start map. Oh, start plugging my values in. Okay. No. Yeah. Okay, so where we find our contradiction is right here. So the main operator of this conditional is false, but if we were to negate it, it would be true, but it says it's false. 
So we know on that line, it doesn't work. Um, but what we have to do, and this is important on page 375, that's why I stalled. I was trying to wait. I was trying to figure out what page I was going to refer back to. So just because it doesn't work, you have to check both possibilities. And let me see, I think it's right here. Yes, right here. If a contradiction has been avoided on some line, but the argument would, of course, be invalid. The argument would, of course, be invalid because it would be possible for the premises to be true and the conclusion for it to be false. So basically, I found a contradiction on one line, but if I avoid it on another one, then it turns out that the argument is invalid. So let me go back. So my point is it doesn't work here. And if it doesn't work there and we found a contradiction, that means we're assuming that it's invalid because that's what we're assuming all along, right? True premise over here and then false conclusion. And we found our contradiction. So we say, yeah, we're, we're done. It's invalid. No, no, no. What Hurley's trying to say is if you have another uh, possible set that you have to work through, you do. So it turns out on line two, there is no contradiction. So this does work. Therefore, the whole thing is actually invalid. And you can pause this and look through it. Um, but in this conditional, you have to... Um, um, have two sets of values here. Okay, so let's do number seven. Okay, a little bit longer. And if you want to push pause, you can work this out and see. And by the way, some of these are real easy to do and some are not. You have to sit there and look at this a couple different ways. Some of, some of you might start from a premise and be able to plug in. Um, your truth values right away and some of you might be able to, you know, start from the conclusion. Everybody's different. There's no exact way. I think Hurley prefers to start from the conclusion, but whatever. Okay. So we'll say not J. G. Conclusions J. So what we're going to do from the get-go, we're going to assume that's false. Look at the main operators for each one. And assume that they're true because that's a purpose. We assume invalidity and we work backwards, right? So we assume and this is just for review because we've been talking this way. Okay, so now let's see, where do we start? Well, um, if you wanna pause this, you can try to work through it. I'm just going to, um, put the variables in so we know, we know a J is false because we get that from our conclusion. This is true, that's gotta be true. The whole thing's gotta be true, so it can't be false, so G has to be true. And then I start plugging in back here. I know my G is there. Um, H, oh yeah, this is true. The whole thing's true, it can't be false. This, so my H has to be true. Now I got my H. Um, that whole thing has to be true, so I got my I, and then I, and I transfer my I from here over to here, and I say, oh, there's a T for my I, right? But then the tilde negates it. It's supposed to be a not I. So then I say, that's my contradiction. So then I can say, oh, I have a contradiction, and I'm assuming invalidity. So my assumption's false, which means the whole thing's valid. So basically, you 
on this one, I started with my J because I know it's a false. And then I went to my J, plugged it in, and then I started working backwards. So I went from this one to this one to this one to this one back to my I, and then I found my contradiction. Okay, so yeah, so there's three from part two. And like I said, some of these are a little harder and some are not. Some are real easy. Like if you could, um, for example, let's say you had a premise that was, and we don't have this in this example, um, but let's maybe look for one down here. Uh, yeah, so let's say we had a, a premise like this. We have a... Con um, Oh, never mind, because that's that's the main conditional. So you're looking for the main conditional. Do we even have one? Like the main conditional. So like this one, a little bit easier. If you knew the main conditional is um, um, true, you might be able to plug in. But the easiest one of all is the conjunction. That's what I'm looking for. Is there a premise that has just a conjunction for the main operator? And no, there, he doesn't. But you could have those... Um, this one would be, would be pretty easy for starting with this because you know you have a conjunction. And if it's false, then you know um, oh, you, you know at least one is true and at least one's false. So you kind of have to do two different things and work your way backwards. Yeah, so he doesn't give us one where the premise has a main operator of a conjunction because otherwise that'd just be a really easy place to start. Um, but okay, so we're moving on. I didn't want to get too sidetracked there. I was looking for something I couldn't find. In. Okay, so let's do part three. So in this one, we're looking at inconsistent statements. Um, remember, there is no um, conclusion here. So, oh, sorry. Let's do this. You got to take from the vertical and make it go to the horizontal. We'll say that's one statement. There's another statement. There you go. And then he's saying, hey, um, look at the main operators for each and assume they're true right away. Um, if you don't find contradictions, you know that they're consistent, right? If you do find a contradiction, it's inconsistent. So this is a little bit different than the last section we did. We're not assuming anything's false. We're assuming they're all true. And there's, there's statements now. They're not arguments. So, <clears throat> so on this one. So this is kind of what I was going for as far as a starting point. That last example I was searching for. Here's an example of it. So if we know that this main operator is true, we know what? Both sides have to be what? They both have to be true. Which means the R is false, by the way. And so that's an easy one to start with. If you're going to pick like, hey, which one do I start with? Well, boy, we got a triple bar. We, we got multiple possibilities for that. that could be true. This one seems like very precise. It's both sides got to be true. So you immediately get your K and your R. And this is the word that I want to use. You're unlocking. Think of it when you do sections one, two, and three in your homework. You're unlocking things by moving backwards. So you're giving truth values. You know um, what the operators are as far as their truth value. So you're unlocking possibilities by working backwards. Here we're unlocking possibilities to find out if something's valid or invalid. Here we're unlocking possibilities to find out if they're consistent or inconsistent. And when it comes to unlocking the possibilities with a um, conjunction, super easy. So what I do is just go straight up and says, hey, I got my K and my T, so I'm just going to go plug them in wherever I got them. I know my R is false, right? So... Um, I know, I know this conclusion, um, the main conditional here is true. Oh, I know my K is true. So this is false. So if the, if the whole conditional is true and I have a false consequent, I have to have a false antecedent. So I got my M I've unlocked my M right. And Let's look. True. 
where did I start? I just want to make sure true, true, false. Um, let me do this. Made a mistake on variable. So I got to this right. And I want to work the other way just to see if I can work out what happened there. False. So the whole thing is true. And I know that this guy is true. I know K has to be true. Okay, okay. So um, I've got my M. True. We already know that this whole thing is true. So to my K fault. Yeah, yeah. So so here's a contradiction. So we know the conditional is true. Um, but it can't be because this says true antecedent false consequent. So I know my contradiction is right here and they don't work because it's saying, Hey, this thing's got to be true, but it can't be true because of those variables. That's what I just wanted to see it a different way when I worked it out with you. Um, so contradiction. Inconsistent. Uh, that pen was a little sloppy. Okay. And once again, I thought it was easy to start here. So let's go this way. We got number four. <clears throat> and this is a little bit of a longer one. I'll try to work this out as best I can without being sloppy. One. Okay, so what he's saying is, hey, um, assume each of these is true. So you could have pushed pause, but you have to find the main operator of each one. So, let's see. Um, oh, that's right. Okay, okay. So, if we're going to start with the... Um, if we're going to start with the conclusion, I can have truth three different ways, at least three different ways with this um, horseshoe. And it can look like this. All right, those are three possible ways that This statement can be uh, true by looking at that conditional. So what I do is I start with the first one and I just start plugging away. And so I know my C is a T and I know my um, H is a T. So I'll start here with that. Um, so I know this whole thing is true. Just start plugging away over here. And you can push pause and try to work through this if you want. Because the way I plug in might not be the way that you do. Um, H, so I know this is true. The whole thing's true, then that's got to be true. So I've unlocked my E there. <clears throat> Give my H E, and that's true. That works. Um, the whole thing's going to be true. This whole thing is going to be true. Um, And okay, so 
Let's look at this first one, the triple bar, if the whole thing's true. Okay, we got our E that was unlocked. That's true. So the other side has to be true. The disjunction's true. Okay, that works over here. Um, I have a false antecedent, so the other side um, can be true or false, and it happens to be false, so that works. Over here is where we started, so this is true, and then this is true. So it turns out this first line, I have the possibility of all three statements being consistent, so in fact it is. I don't need to um, look at those because it worked now but what if i had started with this one or this one if i found a um inconsistency i'd, I'd still have to work to see if the other options would work and we did we found out the first one so i got lucky when i did my true and my true for my antecedent and my consequent if i would have started from these other two i might i might have run into a contradiction i might have i might have had to exhaust this one and this one but i got lucky on the first try because i went all the way through and i didn't find any contradictions so once again, start with the assumption they're all consistent because they're all true statements. Um, start plugging in, working our way backwards. Look for a contradiction. If you don't find one, it's possible that they're consistent. They're consistent. Um, this one is just another problem that I made. So let's start with him. Um, okay. So let me, oh, I actually wrote it out, but I'll, I'll do it again so I can kind of space it better. Okay, so find the main operator of each one, no problem. Um, this one happens to be easy because I know in this middle premise, if that's true, that's just false. So then I unlocked my um, there. I know this is, um, where did I start with on this one? Oh, hold on. Did I write down? You know, I want to say I think here, let me do this. I had a different problem in mind. You can do that one on your own if you want. You can look at it before I erased it. Um, actually, I'll just make it easy. If you want to do that, you can do it on your own. I want to do another one on purpose, and I'm only going to do one more. So let's do this. I was looking at it, and I'm like, I wrote this thing down the wrong way because I was looking at a different example. Okay, I want to do this one for a reason. Okay, so look, and you can push pause to see if you can get these um, to work. And here's why this is, um, here's why I picked this one. So if you look at the last one, you have a triple bar, right? There's two ways that can be true, right? They both have to be the same variable. So I'm going to work through both of them just to see about my possibilities. So if we assume that first one, the values are C, so I'll just go. And it's pretty easy, right? Because we only use two letters, and we've already unlocked them right away on that first possibility. So we can say, hey, that first one works. Uh, do, 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 B is true. C is true. That's full. Okay, so that works. I don't violate any rules there on my assumption that this is true and this is true. And what about my assumption that this is false and this is false? Because it still makes the still makes that true, right? So now let's see if it works here. And by the way, me doing this can actually help you with section two as well, because if you have multiple possibilities for a conclusion, like a triple bar or a horseshoe or something like that you have to work through them so that kind of helps here um, so let's plug away so here i'm assuming my c and b are false so okay no problem right just false well i just start writing them in everywhere right 
and then I can look and I can find out so let's do this one um, false and false yep so that works and then over here at least one side has to be true yep and I got my true over here so it turns out that that works so it turns out this whole thing is consistent and what I did is I showed you I, I can work through two possibilities and find out hey both work so that's pretty much it you know this homework I'll admit it's really abstract you are doing something that you're not usually doing because section you know 6.4 and 6.3 when you're literally doing straight truth tables and you're going all the way down and you're exhausting your truth um, possibilities like true and false it's pretty easy in one sense you just put them there and then you solve right this one's not so easy because you're starting with an assumption you're working back and you're having to unlock the truth values of these propositions and for some of you, it's not so clear when you look at the conclusion. Do I start there? Do I start with a premise? Either way, you start trying to unlock as many propositions as you can so that you can get the truth values to find out there, you know, like in section two, if the argument's valid or invalid, or section three, whether they're consistent or inconsistent. So in that sense, 6.5, this this section, it's it's a lot more abstract, a lot more abstract thinking, and it's a little harder. So you just have to work through these over and over. Um, or look at my examples, push, pause, work, you know, work through them. And like I said, you may solve these or unlock certain propositions um, differently than I do. I might start with something differently or in a different order than you. That's totally fine. Remember, the goal is to find out if they're consistent by finding no contradiction. Um, and if you do find a contradiction, they're inconsistent. Or up here, the goal is to find to see if you find a contradiction, then you know the whole thing is valid, which is opposite of what you started from. And if you don't find a contradiction, you know it is invalid, which is what you assumed or started from in the beginning. I know it's a lot of words, but um, it just takes practice. So thanks for hanging in um, with me. If you have any questions, just let me know.